There are so many ways that you can learn and improve your landscape photography. And I would say one of the best ones is to give feedback to other photographers and receive feedback from other photographers. In this video, I'm going to make my top 10 favorite photos from Nigel Danson's portfolio. In the end of the video, I'm also going to get his reaction to my choices. So stay around for that. If this video gets enough views, I may convince Nigel to do the same for my portfolio. Now making your top 10 favorite photos from another person's portfolio doesn't just give that person some feedback. It also gives yourself some feedback. You start to reflect why is it that you like a particular photo more than others. And it's especially good because you get your own bias out of the selections. And I'm sure if you ask me again in a year, my top 10 will probably be a little bit different. But without further ado, let's get into it. And speaking about non-biased photos, the first one, my number 10 selection, is one where I myself is actually in the photo. But personally, I just love this composition so much and it's so strong. It's from the Faroe Islands. Nigel himself has talked about this photo quite a lot on his channel, so I don't have a whole lot more to add. But obviously the light is just perfect in this photo. We have the leading line here in the foreground leading up to me standing here and looking at these amazing sea stacks. Well, the background is actually an island. The foreground is a sea stack. But I love the toning. I love the composition. It's a photo I've taken myself so many times and I have so many different versions of it. And the detail I actually like about this specific composition is that you have the background islands out here on the right. So you need to do a little bit of wiggling of where you place the person standing out there relative to the background. But the background in itself gives extra depth to the photo. The next one is this one shot here from Svalbard of this polar bear standing there in front. And if we zoom in, we can actually see Nigel managed to capture it when the polar bear was looking kind of down and back. So we don't just see the polar bears, but that's one of the things with wildlife photography you generally want to avoid is to just take a photo of the animal's butt. You want to see its face. And then we of course have the layers of ice all the way through up to this glacier wall of ice that just looks so epic. Central composition, as I love, even the slight color contrast between the yellowish white of the polar bear and the rest of the landscape being either white or blue really makes the polar bear stand out. Such a powerful photo of this marine animal in its environment. Beautiful. And number eight, I just love this kind of landscape. We have quite a few of them in Denmark too, so I can like relate to the photo. I could probably get something similar here in Denmark. I haven't yet exactly got it with birch trees. And birch trees are generally also just notoriously hard to edit. So I think Nigel has done a brilliant job in the editing of this one here. I really like that you can see a couple of trees out there in the background in the mist. The only slight one that I can live with is that the foreground branch right here is slightly soft and blurry because of what I guess is wind. But nevertheless, it doesn't take away from the overall photo. I really, really enjoy this one here. And number seven, I think this is from Scotland, correct me if I'm wrong. This here is just a prime example of how to use light and scale to show what would otherwise probably be a little bit less of an interesting photo. But all the way down here in the left corner, we have this little house getting lit. And then we of course have the low sun coming in and lighting the lower half of the mountains right here. And it just shows how large these mountains are. My estimated guess is that it's a fairly long lens photo. And because of that, we don't have too much foreground right here. And we don't really need that foreground. We have a little bit of the ocean, I guess it is. And then we just have the massive mountains. I really like this one. And number six, it's basically the same phenomenon. And this one here is from the Faroe Islands. I've been to this location several times. I love how Nigel has placed the little church 
all the way down in the left corner. He almost breaks the rules here, but it just works perfectly to again show the scale of this massive mountain here in the background. And we have the line of the shadow and the foreground line here that pulls you in to the church. And then from the church, you go out and you see this big, big mountain. Marvelous photo. So if you want to learn more about composition, both Nigel and myself have eBooks on composition in landscape photography. You can just follow the links and find Nigel's through his homepage. And you can find my eBooks down in the description of this video. Whether it's mine or Nigel's eBooks, they are really easy to read and they have plenty of examples. If you combine all three of them, my two with his, you should be good to go in regard to learning about composition in landscape photography. Now, Nigel is, of course, a fantastic photographer. He takes beautiful photos. I'm a big fan of his work. And I feel almost criminal for sorting out some of the photos that did not make it to top 10, because obviously Nigel has so many more photos. And I'm sure that many of the photos I have actually selected is maybe not his own favorite photos. I would like to hear that from him in the end and reflect on that. So number five, I was here this morning when Nigel took this one and I myself got so many of my favorite photos from 2022 when Nigel James and I climbed Lofric Fell in the morning and we got this incredible view of the fog down in the valley between the mountains. There's not a whole lot to say other than it has all the elements I absolutely love for landscape photography. This specific composition is quite different to the compositions that I made. And I really respect Nigel for taking this photo because I don't think I have this specific composition, but it's a very great composition. I would say that obviously you are drawn to the road here that leads you into the photo, but it is especially the little house and the tree here in the middle that really stands out that you go to. And then of course, a couple of trees over here. And it just gives this fantastic morning feeling with the fog and the light coming in from the side. So now we come to number four. My fourth favorite of all of Nigel's photos is this one photo here from the Faroe Islands. I have this composition myself, but I almost prefer Nigel's photos to my own. And it's especially because of the showers out here on the left but the entire mood and atmosphere just makes the islands like come out. They are distant, yet you still see them. They're mysterious. They are moody. They just, this photo is just phenomenal. <laughs> I, I, I love it. And of course, you can see all the way out here on the right, this composition here is one I often photograph when I'm up there. They're just like the classic composition from this location. But when you take in the entire islands, you just get a completely different photo, less dramatic and more like mysterious. So now we're moving into top three. And for me, this is quite exciting, especially to hear what Nigel are thinking, because I remember when Nigel made this video and he showed this photo and I was like, wow, this photo here is one of my favorite photos of yours, Nigel, that I've ever seen. I love this one. And I'm sure that you can probably tell me that it's only five minutes from your home. <laughs> but it was also funny when I had to sort out my favorite photos, that it was the folder from the Peak District where there was most photos left of photos that I really, really liked. And this one here is my favorite from that folder. Morning mist, English landscape, golden light, oak trees, and everything just comes together in, in the layers here and the lines in the trees. And of course, because it's England, you have the sheep walking here in the background. Obviously, the tree here is your focal point, And from there, you just explore it. There's like a little bit of beaming light. And I, I can, I can, I wouldn't mind having this photo on my own wall, that's for sure. So number two is this one here from Antarctica. I know James Popsis has a similar photo. You guys were out at the same time taking this photo and just the sheer fact that I did not make it to Antarctica makes me 
super jealous of you guys having this photo. This is phenomenal. Like, it's such a minimalist landscape. Obviously, it's taken from the boat. And we have this single iceberg with a lone penguin on it. And then you have the triangular mountain there in the background. And you don't just have the water. You also have some sea mist in there. And as you know, I'm a sucker for atmosphere. It's close to a classic rule of thirds composition with the focal point down here and then the counterbalance in the mountain here in the background or mountains. But it's just so minimal and in many ways also powerful at the same time. Yeah, beautiful. And my top favorite photo of Nigel's entire portfolio, at the very least the one on his website, is this one. So I love this photo and this winter. I have tried to see if I can find locations here in Denmark that are somewhat similar to something like this here. I do have some photos that are somewhat similar to this photo, but not with the same amount of like hoarfrost. The hoarfrost in and of itself, of course, adds to the atmosphere. You can see here in the background, the trees become white. We have the reflection of the middle tree here that helps with making order in the photo. Nigel have placed the foreground reeds here perfectly for the background. We even have the moon up here that is reflected in the water down here. And he placed the moon between the reeds. I don't know if that was on purpose or not. I have a bit of a pink cloud up here. And then we, of course, have the hoarfrost atmosphere there in the background that really creates the separation between the mid-ground trees here that are also the focal point and then of course the background. The atmosphere, the airiness of the photo, yet even though it's cold, ah, there's so much detail but it is just so orderly placed. It's such a comfortable photo to look at even though it's so cold. It's brilliant, Nigel. I love this one. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on my top 10 photos from your own portfolio. So over to you. Well, that was amazing. Um, it's so nice when somebody you respect so much says so many nice things about your photos. Uh, and the thing that came out, and I'm going to go through a, a little bit of the photos. Hopefully I won't go on for too long. So bear with me on Massey's video here. Um, but the thing that came out most on this was two things. One, um, that Mass has been with me on four of those 10 photos. And I want to talk about that in a little bit more detail because I think experience is a big thing about photography and reliving that experience. And then the other thing, which I thought was um, really interesting is it is just this wouldn't be my top 10. There's a couple of photos that I think I put in my top 10, but it wouldn't be my top 10. I actually asked um, my son and my wife what they thought of your top 10 mass, and they said, no, they wouldn't be in the, their top 10, but their top 10, they showed me some of their favorite photos were completely different than mine. So when you get to, you know, photos, then it becomes very personal, um, and people like different things. So I think that that's interesting. To get to some of the specifics of this, um, just get to the two that I would put in my top 10. And I think it'd be these two, you know, the, definitely the one that Mass liked the most. This is one of my favorite photos. And it, it's, this is really special to me because I was with my father uh, when I took this photo. It was really close to where he lives. And yes, I did put the moon there. I did think about that. I, I had quite a lot of time to take this photo. So I was very precise with my position of things. Um, this one was not like that. This was just like a moment that was just captured with me and James, actually. Um, and this is definitely one of my favorite photos of all time probably might be my favorite photo just because it, it was just so special and so different um, and then it's quite interesting with the other ones because I you know like this one here this is a place that I go and walk pebbles all the time and I sort of take it for granted I think a little bit and I think that's something that's probably important and a lesson that I've learned from from this mass is that 
we, we just take these things for granted, don't we? These places that are around us that are so, so beautiful. Um, and this is one of them, I suppose. And, and when you were pointing out the things in that, I thought, yeah, actually, this is this is a much better photo than I probably thought. I like it. You know, it's definitely a photo that I'm proud of, but it's definitely not one that I would have put in my top 10. And then, you know, I, I obviously, you know, I know that you like this type of photo, whereas I like this photo, but it's probably not my favorite photo, really. Um, similar with this one and this one. Um, the, the polar bear one was a really interesting one, actually, because this is a photo that I was really disappointed with. Um, I'll let you into a secret. This is a big crop. <laughs> so if I just go onto the develop here and I just crop it, you can see that I've cropped in significantly onto this photo. And um, I, that's what made me sad because I didn't have a long enough lens. This is 400 millimeters. And I did, I did you know, it's sharp, it's pin sharp, but I wish it had more megapixels. But it doesn't matter, does it? Why do ma megapixels matter? Because I'm worried about what doesn't matter. You know, I've got a polar bear in Svalbard and it looks absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, that was really interesting. Thanks, Mass. I really appreciate you doing this. Um, it made me think about my photography a little bit differently. And um, a great idea. And I'd love to find your top 10, but I think that would be really, really hard for me to find the, the, the 10 photos that I like most of yours because you've got so many. But yeah, I'm definitely going to do that video on my channel soon. Thanks. See you, everyone. Thanks so much, Nigel, for letting me read your photos. And it was also fun to hear your own thoughts on it. I hope all of you guys out there learned something. There are links to all my educational material, ebooks, Photoshop course, so you can learn how to edit your photos too, down in the description of this video. See you next time.